Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how to create this application that's on the screen. This will be a Visual Studio project, and we are going to focus in on working with databases. So let's look at the features of what we're going to build, and then I'm going to give you the outline of the different subjects that we're going to cover, some of the technical things that you'll learn, and then finally we'll get into the part where we start building it. So let's look at the features first, and then we'll get into what we actually have to learn. So in the features, you can see on the application that we have a database. So that's the main feature. And we are going to have a bunch of songs. So you can see that I have albums on the top table here. And when I click on an album, I have a preview of the album cover. And then in the bottom part, we can see the different uh, songs that are on that album. So for instance, here we got help. And I have a video player over here. And so we can listen to the Beatles as they call for help. So if I choose the other song here, you'll see that it'll automatically switch. Oh, it looks to me like that one's unavailable. And then we get Ticket to Ride and I have to suffer through an ad. So this is just a YouTube player. It is not anything saved to my computer. All right, so now I'm getting Ticket to Ride like I asked for to begin with. Now I can also delete some of these things. So for instance, if I wanted for some reason to get rid of Abbey Road, I can try the delete button up here. And then I get a confirm message that says, are you sure you want to delete number three? As you can see, album number three is listed here. And I don't actually want to delete this right now. Okay, so now let's talk about what are some of the features and some of the programming that you're going to learn. First of all, you can see that we're going to build a database. Let's see what this database looks like. You can see I have a table here called album, another one called track, and I've filled in some data for you. We're going to be working with MySQL and this tool called MySQL Workbench. And so you can see that the table definition here shows that we have a foreign key relationship between the album and all of the tracks that are on that album. So I will take you through the process of setting up a database and defining the different fields and then creating this link between the two tables called a foreign key. So this video is targeted at people who know some programming, but are not really familiar with databases to a great deal. And so what we're gonna do is focus in on how to build this database and to write the queries that can make this application work. My name is Shad Sluter, and I teach software development at Grand Canyon University in Phoenix, Arizona. So in this course, you're going to see the emphasis on working with databases. So I'm teaching a course on SQL and on Mongo right now. And so you get to see the benefit of what we're doing in class. If you would like to look at the full series of this thing, you can either subscribe to the channel that you're looking at now on YouTube, or you can see the more extensive version on studycoding.org, which is another website. So I welcome you to come back because uh, people that are in my classroom are becoming professional software developers and getting great jobs. And so you could do that too. Okay, so let's get into the first phase of this. So phase number one is build the database. Phase number two is to build the application. And then phase three is to connect those two things together. So we're starting off here at the beginning, which could take a little while. We're going to build a database. So what we're going to do first is design the album table and then after we have the album table working, we will go and try to make it connect to the application. And then we'll come back to the track and we'll add the song tracks later. So we're going to build this application kind of piecewise. So we'll get very basic to start with and then more advanced as we get through the series of videos. So let's start with building a new database. Okay, so let's get started with the tools that we're going to need. So in this first part, we're going to need to have a SQL server. So there are various types of SQL databases that you can install. We're going to be using MySQL, which is free, it's open source, it runs on multiple platforms. However, there are other alternatives besides MySQL, even though it's the most popular and widely used database uh, probably in the planet. You could use Postgres, which apparently has more features. You could use Microsoft SQL, which is a very scalable and is used by a lot of enterprise customers. You could go to Oracle, they have a very expensive system, and you could probably find others as well. But MySQL is what we're choosing because it has great tools and it's free. So the tool that we're going to be using is MAMP. 
M-A-M-P. That stands for Macintosh, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. Now, don't let the Macintosh part uh, scare you away because if we were to go look at the downloads, we're going to see that the first version that they recommend is for Windows. So they have a Windows version and a Mac version, which is really good because in my classroom, I have students that have both types of operating systems on their computer. So we're going to install MAMP and uh, we're going to wait for the download to finish. And then when we set it up, we will not choose MAMP Pro, but we will just use the free version. It will work just great for our purposes. Another tool that we'll be using in this project is MySQL Workbench. And you can see the download page here. Now, MySQL Workbench is used for arranging more complex databases. And so we won't see this for the first part of the tutorial because we're only going to have a single table to get started with. But just to let you know that this is coming, we will be using this eventually. To create the application that will make this uh, media player work, we're going to be using Visual Studio version 2022, and we'll be creating a Windows desktop application. So we'll get to that part when we get to the application. We're first of all going to build the database though. Okay, so now I have skipped ahead. I have installed MAMP. I have chosen not to use MAMP Pro, so I unchecked one of those boxes. And now I have this application up and running. Now, I want to start this, so I'm going to click Start Servers, and you're going to see two different little green dots appear. One for Apache, and the second one for MySQL Server. Now, we could care less about Apache Server for this application. This is for hosting websites, and this is not going to be a web application. However, we're going to be using a SQL Server, so that way we have the ability to uh, handle the database. And so that's why I installed MAMP. Now, there are other packages that you could use if this doesn't work out for you. You could use WAMP, W-A-M-P, which is for Windows. You could use XAMPP, X-A-M-P. You can search for that. It has the same functionalities with different menus in different places. Another tool which is really good that is not required you to install anything is the USB web server. So the second link on the page here actually has a free version of what USB web server is. And you can download this and you can literally run it from a USB stick. You could run it on any computer lab where you don't have access to install software. And it will do the same features as what we're going to do in the video. So take your pick. I'm going to be using MAMP, and that's what the tutorials will be easiest to follow with. So go ahead and pick MAMP if you can. Otherwise, choose one of the alternatives. Okay, so now we're back. Now that we got the application running, let's go ahead and choose this button called Open Start Page. And you're going to see that the website opens to localhost slash MAMP. So let's go to Tools, and I want to choose PHP My Admin. And this will bring up all of the databases that I have installed on this server. So you can see over on the left side, I have Music, MySQL, and a few other things. So the only thing that we're going to focus in on here is this one called Music. And since that I've already created this application, I have some data in it. You can skip ahead. If you know how to do all of this, we need to create a table and fill it with some data. But I'm going to do that right now so you can see the process. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new database. So I have music. I'm going to create a new one. So let's click the link at the top. And this one, I'm just going to call it music2 because I'm going to recreate the same application. The language that you choose, of course, is probably English if you're watching this video. I'm just going to choose the general uh, text that we have here. Now we are supposed to create a table. And the first table we're going to create is called albums. And now we have to decide how many columns we're going to put in the albums table. Okay, so now I'm going to cheat and I'm going to look back to what I actually created in this uh, application. So here's the other tab. You can see I'm going to create one, two, three, four, five, six, six columns. And I'm going to have different data types in each column. So let's change this number to a six and then choose create table. Let's click the go button. The first thing we're going to do is name these six columns. So just going straight down the left side of the form, I'm gonna type in ID. In a database, ID is always the first item. It's a number that uh, has a unique identifier for each record. The next thing we're going to put in is the album title. And I'm using an underscore to separate the words. Um, you don't have to use underscores, but it's a pattern that a lot of people use. I'm going to use artist, year, image name, and description to be the rest of these. So these were going to be the six columns 
that describe each album in our database. Now let's take a look at the next item here, so the type. So every one of these right now says int, which stands for integer. Now integers are numbers, of course. Now if I want to have something besides an integer, I can just select it from here. I'm going to choose a text version. So uh, varchar and text are two choices. Let's take a look at the hints to see why we would pick one or the other. So varchar is a variable length character string and it is um, used for things like words or titles. So it fits perfectly with the album title. And then the next item over here, we can say how many characters. So let's say 100 letters is the length of our title. Now for the rest of these, we're going to add some more details. So for the artist, this would also make sense to use a variable character length, varchar. We've got a year, which we'll leave right at integer. That's easy to work with. We could pick date, but year is pretty simple to work with. We're going to work with an image name, which is a URL. So it's the, uh, it's the HTTP slash Wikipedia address that we're going to get images from. And so this could be pretty long. Let's leave it at, let's say, a thousand characters for the maximum length. Then for the description, let's change this to text. Now, the difference between text and varchar is kind of subtle. So text is usually used if you have a large section, like a, a text area on a web page where you expect to see paragraphs of information. Varchar usually is a single line for like a, a name or an address or something rather short. So both of them are saving letters in, in a format that looks the same to us, but they are different in the computer's mind. So text works well for description. Okay, so this thing's ready to go. So down here at the bottom, you can see that there's a save button. Let's click it and cross our fingers. So as soon as I click save, you can see now I, I have switched to the tab called structure. So structure tells me what my database is made of. So you can see that we have all of these data types that we just created, and there's uh, gonna be no data. So if I choose browse, we're going to see that the uh, column headers are here, and there's actually no data in the database yet. Now I'm gonna change one item that I forgot to do previously. Uh, the first item is an ID number, and that is supposed to be a unique number that the computer generates. So I'm going to click the change icon, and let's see why I would want to change that. So I'm going to switch over here to this item that says auto increment, A underscore I. That is not artificial intelligence, that's auto increment. And when I select it, it's going to automatically choose the next number available for whatever record I put in. So the first one will be at record number one, and then two, and then so on. It never deletes uh, uh, or goes backwards, so it'll go to infinity eventually, but we just wanna make sure it's unique. So let's say, let's click save. Now, as soon as I click save, you notice there's a new icon here. It's got a little key. So that tells me that the ID is now a primary key, which is important. It means that it is the only item really that has to be filled in in all six columns, and it will be used to connect to this table to other tables later on. So that's enough to get us started with our database. Let's add some data. So as I try to add data, I click on the insert tab and now I'm going to fill in some items. I'm going to leave the ID blank because the computer is going to automatically provide the next number in the database. So the first one will be one. So we'll leave it blank. The title for our album is Abbey Road and it's done by the Beatles and the date is 1961. Now let's see if we can get some information from the internet to fill in the other items. So I've got a description and an image URL Let's just use our friends at Wikipedia to help us out. So I'm going to search in Google for Wikipedia and Abbey Road, and let's bring up the article that tells us about Abbey Road. So first of all, the image, let's take a copy of that. So I'm gonna right click it and choose copy image address, and let's switch back into our database, and now let's paste it here. So let's see, control V, and you can see that the URL to this image is from uploads at Wikipedia. So I don't have to save this to my disk. I'm just going to rely on whatever's hosted at Wikipedia. So if they delete this picture from their website, my application will no longer be able to show the image. So it saves me space, but then I have to rely on them not to delete my image. Let's scroll down a little bit and you can see the last item here is a text field and we're supposed to add a description. 
Well, here's a nice description. Let's just copy the first part of the uh, Wikipedia article and let's paste it into our database. And now I don't have to type anything. Now I'm going to click go. So it says here at the top that one row has been inserted and it tells me the SQL statement that was just executed. You notice it says insert into has the table name. Then it mentions all of the column names here. And then the next statement is values. And then below that, you can see all of the text. So if I click on browse, I should be able to go back and see that now I have one item called Abbey Road. If I want to see one of these in detail, I can just double click it. And you can now see that I have a whole bunch of data in the description, which takes multiple lines. So that is how you can fill in a table. If you would like to look at the full series of this thing, you can either subscribe to the channel that you're looking at now on YouTube, or you can see the more extensive version on studycoding.org, which is another website. So here's your homework. I want you to fill in about a half a dozen different albums. So I'm picking the Beatles. You can choose anyone you like, but we need to have something that we can search for. So for the next video, I'm going to show you how to query data and you can search for certain keywords or filter it. So come back again and we'll continue on our database application.